So Brian, where are we going? Well, we have just crossed the U.S. border um, from Canada uh, at Chief Mountain Crossing. We're on our way to Glacier National Park in the U.S. We're going to do the going to the Sun Road. We're going to start it at St. Mary's and we're going to finish up at West Glacier. And then we're going to stay overnight in Columbia Falls and then come back the road the next day. And uh, hopefully we're going to have some breathtaking views and scenery that should be unparalleled. So we're coming up to the gate of Glacier National Park. Just waiting to hand over our park pass and then we're in. So over there is the visitor center. You can find out lots of useful information over there. What trails are open, what sites to see, uh, any bear warnings. Hi there. Thank you. And do you need any of the literature today? Yes, if you have a, um, yeah, a map thing, that'd be good. Yeah, the hiking information is in the center of the newspaper now. Great. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a good day. And now we're officially in. Glacier National Park was established as a national park on May 11, 1910, America's 10th national park signed into law under President Taft. Known for its alpine scenery and numerous glaciers as reasons to visit the park, the Great Northern Railway enticed visitors with new hotels, chalets, and horse trails through the backcountry. They invited the Americans to see America first and to use their railway to get to Glacier Park. As the popularity of the automobile grew, so did the love for the road trip. The first road planned into Glacier National Park called for 15 switchbacks up the side of the mountain to get over Logan Pass. However, the final road, built in the late 1920s, left a much smaller footprint on nature with only one switchback and was cut into the rock cliffs. Today, that road is called Going to the Sun Road and is considered one of the best mountain roads in America and a blueprint for merging man with nature. The road spans 50 miles and crosses the Continental Divide at Logan Pass. During your traverse, you will see impressive glaciers, beautiful valleys, cascading waterfalls, towering mountains, and colorful wildflowers. Most visitors will also witness wildlife sightings on their trip across the Sun Road. The history of the park began around 1850 with the area containing about 150 glaciers. Today there are at least 35 named glaciers in Glacier National Park, however only 25 active glaciers remaining in the park today. In the early history of the park area around 1850, the area contained at least 150 glaciers. However, there are currently only 35 named glaciers in Glacier National Park, 25 of which are active glaciers today. Climate change specialists believe that all glaciers will disappear from Glacier National Park by the end of 2030. While we were visiting the park, we did see two or three glaciers from the Going to the Sun Road. However, not as many as in previous years and certainly not as large as we'd seen in the past. The hike to Pagan Pass in Glacier National Park begins from the Sia Bend Trailhead, located 2.2 miles east of the Logan Pass, on the Going to the Sun Road. Hikers also do have the option of using the Pagan Pass Trailhead from the Jackson Glacier Overlook, but this does add a little more distance to your hike and several hundred more feet of climbing. The Sia Bend Trail offers hikers as much more gradual climb to their destination. 
Due to its popularity, the Going to the Sun Road can be very busy. Do make sure that you do go early and be aware of a lack of parking and watch for people along the side of the road. Most visitors travel by car and make the most of the scenic drive over the Going to the Sun Road. Size restrictions on vehicles may prevent visitors from visiting the historic road. The park straddles the Continental Divide, so though areas may look close on the map, remember that winding mountain roads are the reality. Going to the Sun Road is the only road that stretches across the interior of the park, connecting West Glacier and St. Mary's U.S. Highway 2 skirts the southern border connecting West Glacier and East Glacier. One of the most beautiful points on the drive is the ability to see the valley and if you are afraid of heights make sure that you don't stand too close to the edge of the road as it is a straight down drop but you really can't beat these views. As you can see from our drive it is a two-lane highway so you have to be patient as there may be people in front of you or behind you who are there to see the view and not necessarily in a hurry to get anywhere. So just make sure that you bring your patience, bring a snack and enjoy the drive. Not everybody wants to drive on the going to the sun road. If this is the case, the, one of the best ways to see it is through one of the red bus tours. The interpretive motorized tours on the Going to the Sun Road are available through the park concessionaires, Sun Tours and Zantara Parks and Resorts. What's really great about these tour buses is you have the ability to see everything in the park without having to worry about other drivers on the road. Just be aware they're on a time schedule. So if you're in a rush, it's great. If you're looking to spend more time in some of the more scenic areas, because they're on a schedule, probably not the tour for you. Logan Pass is the highest elevation reachable by car in the park. It is extremely popular with visitors and the parking lot is generally full between 8.30 and 4 p.m. Consider visiting this destination by using the free shuttles to avoid the limited parking or plan to visit early or late in the day if possible. Early morning light on the mountains provides excellent photographs and the chances to see wildlife are greater before the crowds arrive. Hiking two of the area's most popular trails, the Hidden Lake Trail and the Highline Trail, are the perfect way to build an appetite for a late supper coming back to camp or hotel. At Logan Pass, Reynolds Mountain and Clements Mountain tower over fields of waterfalls, wildflowers through the summer. Waves of yellow glacier lilies pushing up through the snow are quickly replaced by a variety of alpine plants adapted to this harsh climate. Mountain goats, bighorn sheep, and the occasional grizzly bear lumbering through the meadows offer spectacular wildlife viewing opportunities on vehicles and RVs, make sure that you check the National Park Service website to see if you meet the size restrictions. If you would prefer not to take your RV on the Going to the Sun Road, Glacier offers a free hop-on, hop-off shuttle service. These shuttles run from St. Mary's Visitor Center to Logan Pass with Logan Pass as the transfer point between the west side and the east side of the park, and then again from Logan Pass to Apgar Visitor Center on the west side of the park. Do expect limited seating at some locations during periods of heavy demand. Smaller shuttles seat 12 or 16 passengers, with larger shuttles seating over 20. As the shuttles routinely fill to capacity, be prepared to wait and enjoy the area that you're visiting until one arrives. If you're looking to travel to Logan Pass from St. Mary's, you're looking at about an hour on the shuttle bus. 
However, if you're traveling from Atcar Visitor Center on the west side of the park to Logan Pass, expect about 1.5 to 2 hours of travel time. Make sure you do plan accordingly by bringing snacks or making sure to fill up your tank as the entire length of the Going to the Sun Road from Apgar Visitor Center to St. Mary's Visitor Center and back again is approximately seven hours. The last service to Logan Pass with time to visit and return departs Apgar Visitor Center at 4.15 and the St. Mary's Visitor Center at 4.50. The 545 shuttle departing the St. Mary's Visitor Center is the last service to Logan Pass for the day. For those of you taking your own vehicle, do be aware that the weather is quite different at, from peak to valley. So closing portions of the going to the sun road is also weather dependent. Typically the road is fully open until the third Monday of October, but that can change due to weather conditions at any point. So just remember, whether you choose to drive your own vehicle, take the free shuttle, or book a sightseeing tour, Glacier National Park has it all available for you. Whether you're driving on the side of the road with the mountain or the other side of the road with the valley below, just remember, be courteous, be careful, and watch where you're going. Everybody's there to see the amazing views available, but remember, not everybody's paying 100% attention. So just go slow and respect everybody else's space. Located 30 miles from West Glacier is the Weeping Wall. The Weeping Wall is a rock face cascading spring water and snow melt along the Going to the Sun Road. Gushing in early summer and weeping in the drier season put this glacier park feature atop your must photograph list. For those passing by in a vehicle, roll up your windows and be prepared for a splash. The 100 foot long gushing torrents of water seen during runoff are not entirely na a natural formation. This feature was partially created during construction on the Going to the Sun Road when workers blasted away a rock outcropping. It is also common to see hikers drenching themselves in the cool water on a hot day. For those in vehicles, be warned, roll up your windows and be prepared to be soaked. Make sure to dress accordingly. Glacier's weather is often highly variable. Temperatures at Logan Pass are usually at least 10 degrees cooler than those at lower elevations. We recommend dressing in layers, bringing a hat to shield yourself from the sun, 
and having a rain jacket handy in case the weather changes. You also may want to consider bringing a toque and gloves in case. Glacier is full of wildlife, both big and small. Sheeps and goats can often be seen at Logan Pass. Whitetail and mule deer are common in the park. Bears and moose are frequently spotted on the east side of the park, where elk are often seen at Two Dog Flats. And don't forget, a variety of birds can also be seen in the park. Other animals that are rarer but still seen are wolverines, wolves, mountain lions, and other animals may be present. Going to the Sun Road has been under a rehabilitation project since 2007, so you'll see many orange cones blocking off several of the turnouts along the way. Just be aware that you may not be able to stop at all the places you'd like to because of this ongoing construction. This is one of the corners that we call a hairpin. It can be a little bit unnerving, one because the rock wall overhangs quite low over your vehicle and on the other side of the road the cliff drops off quite dramatically. It's definitely awe-inspiring. This is another example of parking overflow. As you can see the parking spots are definitely limited so just make sure that you're being patient and courteous to other vehicles.
On this trip, we didn't get too lucky with wildlife. We only saw a deer that you can see off to the right here. But in other years, we've been really lucky and seen everything from bears to mountain goats. We came across a deer right around the corner. If you're looking for a place to cool down on a hot day for either yourself or your dog or just looking for a place to stop and eat lunch, McDonald Creek is great. It's clear, it's clean, and it's very cool and not hard to find a spot where you can gain easy entry for either yourself, your children, or your animals. If you happen to be traveling with your pets, please be aware that they must be on a leash at all times. They are not allowed on any of the backcountry trails or on any of the front country trails at all, nor are they allowed in any of the park buildings. They're only allowed within one of the 13 campgrounds available throughout the park. Make sure that you plan ahead. There are no services along the 33 mile stretch of road between Lake McDonald and the Rising Sun Motor Inn on the west side of the park. Make sure you bring enough water and snacks for your day's adventures. A picnic at Logan Pass or at one of the scenic turnouts is a great way to take an, or enjoy a midday break, but be aware that the bathrooms are few and far between on this section of the park. <laughs> so this has been a great experience at Glacier this time and if you have any questions or um, want more information please leave it in the comments below and of course give our video a like it helps us out a lot don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see more videos from us and of course Camp in Harmony